Hello, thanks for joining me today. We are continuing our bloat series. Hope you guys are enjoying it and had a really great weekend. Uh, we got some really great rain and I love the rainbows that come out. And today it's super sunny. Here in California, how are you guys doing and where are you guys from? Let me know. We're gonna continue the topic today about our bloat series and we'll have like a final webinar if you'd like to join um, and uh, check it out. I don't know if we have the link yet, but hopefully we will. And today we are covering a simple New Year's plan for 2022, which you can start now, to increase your vitality and lose excess body fat permanently. Who would like some of that? Um, I'm excited to share things that work. Hey, Robin, thanks for joining from Hawaii. I love you. Thank you so much for everything. I'd like to share about all the things that really work here at the Gut Institute. Um, we have found this out over the last 10, 20 years, the things that really work. And it's so awesome to have studies that back it up. Did you guys like reading the citations on the last post we did for the bloat series? Awesome. Great. And our bloat webinar that's coming up, we have a lot more going on and share about the species that really are important for bloating and to reduce bloating. And if you're a practitioner, I hope you really enjoy that. We have MM22 coming up. It's our microbiome medicine conference where we'll share all our protocols that really work, really simple to use, and how to interpret certain labs that will help you in your practice and your clients to get the fastest results like we do. Um, have redu reduction of autoimmunity and brain fog, body fat, and fatigue in six months or less. So thanks for joining today. I um, hope you guys have overcome your post-feasting um, issues and have um, started to employ some of the really great things that help your body to feel awesome and your gut flora to feel even more fantastic and fabulous. Um, may your health be as awesome as your microbiome, as marvelous as your microbiome. And today we're going to go over more tips, more hacks, uh, things that really, really work. Now, I love the holidays. It's actually my favorite, favorite um, season of the year. Um, they're a time of such great celebration, and this year even more special. And I love all these delightful days. They're also great for our taste buds, right? And with Thanksgiving behind us, we have to look forward to um, many other holidays, including Christmas and New Year's. Um, how many of you guys have your tree up and are getting ready to celebrate? Awesome. And I love New Year's too. Like, actually, I like the daytime more. Um, I don't really stay up till midnight, I have to admit. So all these festive times are coming up. And how many you st are still having any belly issues or body issues? I have to admit, I just came back from a really awesome um, medical conference, the A4M. So I have so many things, so many wonderful things to share with you guys. And um, I just uh, love, like, celebrating with friends, seeing friends, hugging and kissing them and like dancing with them and like enjoying class classroom time. Um, now, how do we like, we're at the tail end of the year and um, as you can expect, there's like some overindulgences. Um, we had our conference actually out in Vegas. So there was a lot of overeating, over drinking, over having fun and little sleep. Um, and um, all the protocols I talk about here, you know, help me to stay as healthy as possible, even though it gets really difficult having all these things going on, um, sitting all day, atrophying in the seats, taking classes, as well as, you know, then going out and sitting again. So how do we, you know, keep all this going? And if you've already put in many months of like, um, you know, really good diet and exercise and good stress reduction, you know, you've laid a really good foundation. You know, don't be too hard on yourselves. Be gentle, be, be easeful on yourselves and know that that strong foundation is going to support you coming up over the holidays, as you've seen. And as we uh, keep going forward, um, keep in mind a couple of these little, little major tips that will help you to maintain your vitality or if you need a little boost. Um, and if you're interested to lose excess body fat permanently now, you know, then this is the time to employ these. And the reason I say that is because during holidays, um, studies show, you know, people tend to gain 10, 20, even 30 pounds over the holidays. And if we're able to just keep our same, maintain our same weight, right, and same body fat composition and same energy, that is a coup. That is a win-win, right? Just staying net the same, right? Um, so this is what I hope uh, to help you with. And then as you're entering the new year, you know, a lot of people have new momentum to move the dial on things and we're here for you. Don't, you know, you don't have to go this alone. So the three tips for a really healthy, happy new year coming up. 
um, to like increase your vitality while losing excess body fat, keep in mind a couple things. The first thing is, all right, eat smart. You know, you've done so much. Um, and occasional um, indulgences is going to be fine if you, you know, kind of eat smart. I, I believe in the 80-20 kind of rule or 90-10, you know, or sometimes, you know, for holidays or uh, indulgences 50-50. <laughs> you know, you can be as easy as you want, uh, depending on what other things you want to do. And I'll give you some extra, extra tips so you can uh, keep all things in line very e easily, you know, without adding too much in. And probably all these things you already have at your disposal or you can get at your local health food store or, you know, you, of course, you can order it from our dispensary. So eating smart means Everyone, you know, may have potential health issues, gut issues, or food allergy issues. Just keep this in mind. You know, don't, don't like overdo too much, you know, go crazy, crazy, you know, eating croissants and gluten all day. You know, occasional indulgence isn't going to be a huge problem. And also keep in mind uh, during the holidays with gift shopping, seeing all the family and friends and, you know, driving around everywhere and trying to keep in touch with everyone, you may, your HPAT axis, your adrenal axis may start to have, um, some stress, right? And so we already talked in other um, uh, posts about how to keep your, you know, stress levels uh, minimal and how to uh, keep that maintained. Um, during meals, just keep in mind to have an adrenal type of diet. What we pro propose here at the Gut Institute is to eat smaller meals, okay? This helps your vital, vital pancreatic enzymes, gastric enzymes, and acids to not be super diluted, all right? Smaller meals, and you can, of course, even add a little um, apple cider vinegar or make a salad dressing, you know, with lemon juice, apple cider vinegar. Um, and this helps absorption tremendously, right? And add a little warm water even, like a little warm tea at your meal. You're really getting your acid and acid and enzymes supercharged up, really ready to work for you. All our enzymes work better at biological activity. The problem is a lot of us, because of gut issues, you know, if you haven't done testing or you don't look at your body temps, you probably have low body temps. That's really common. You don't have to be low thyroid or anything. It's mostly low adrenals and just a lot of subclinical infections, you know, all over our body, the skin, the gut, you know. So that's what we're here for. And not enough probiotics, right? Ultimately, we're missing a macronutrient. It's our probiotics. Um, so the adrenal diet is to eat small frequent meals and, and spread them out, maybe, you know, four times a day or five times a day. And what I believe in is you have a low core body temps, you likely have low adrenal function. Um, we're gonna have surveys coming up. I don't know if we uh, have the adrenal survey yet, but we have a really amazing adrenal survey that we use with clients for over 10 years. And it's super awesome to detect what's going on with the adrenal glands. So if you wake up, you know, wired but tired, you know, or at night you're wired but tired, or you don't get the full sleep and you get up, or you have a, a hard problem with body fat reduction, you know, or um, you crave salt food, salty foods, or you crave sugar foods, sweet foods, or both, you know, those really indicate a lot of adrenal issues. We have a whole survey with um, metrics on each side. And by looking at what's going on, um, you know, we'll detect what's going on. So the adrenal diet is where you include every macronutrient, right? Um, this helps to keep your immune system at its peak. So that means your macros include fat, carbs, complex carbs, and protein. Don't omit any of these. So this is not the time of year to start yo-yo diets um, or going carb-free um, because these are going to impact your really important hormones, adrenaline, insulin, and cortisol. And then these, you know, with this extra stress, with all the already holiday stress going on, you're going to have steroid steel. Then this starts affecting testosterone and progesterone for men and women. These are all really important anabolic hormones. And when you affect those, you're also going to move into something known as estrogen dominance. And that causes uh, a retention of body fat and fluids, edema. So again, um, just eat really smart, you know, don't go crazy and um, uh, consider just eating, not too crazy and uh, small frequent meals and the meals you want to include, maybe consider higher fiber foods. You know, if you don't want to, I get lazy, you know, I don't want to make a salad every day or make legumes or lentils every day. Those are the most concentration dense, nutrient dense foods I can consider think about. Um, uh, and if you don't have the time or energy, that's awesome. Then consider just something called bionic fiber. All right. Um, my staff, um, maybe my staff is having a little issue logging on, but um, we're going to post about step number four. If you go to our website under, I think, protocols, 
um, look at Dr. Grace's seven steps to cure SIBO and SIFO. It's step number four. All seven steps are awesome. You can start that talking about that now. I mean, looking at that, we can discuss that. But step number four is our, our recipe for bionic fiber. And then my staff, when they get the chance, they're going to write about, give you um, information about uh, a couple fibers that I really love. And you can add it in uh, to consult with your medical team. Um, and consider you know different ratios and always with lots of water. And to make your bionic fiber taste better, um, consider adding some flavor. I love vitamin C, so there's an amazing product called BioFizz Plus, awesome. And then you get your vitamin C, so you keep your immune system pumped up. And um, you can also consider a little amazing grass. There's a whole bunch of greens in there, reds. You can get red flavors or green flavors, it's all incredibly awesome. How many of you have tried bionic fiber before and really like it? An additional benefit of anything that's a fi higher fiber diet, nutrient diet, you know, our paleo ancestors, it's estimated they probably had 100 grams or even 130 grams of prebiotics fiber every day. And this helped feed not them, you know, these are carbs that are not used by our glycemic load. These are carbs that feed the microbiome, that feed your good bacteria, especially those including uh, microbiome mojo and bifida maximus. These Probiotics also eat mucus, which is amazing and awesome. And you want to feed them in the best way. And that's why um, when you eat foods that have some gooey kind of carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, like legumes and lentils, or you know other root, root vegetables are awesome. But every whole grain also has some as well. How many of you guys like your whole grains? You don't need a lot. A little bit goes a long way. I like, if I'm working out, I like, you know, five servings a day. So um, feed your flora or they're gonna starve and have nothing to eat and die off. Um, so the fib bionic fiber I love is a little bit of organic psyllium, a little bit of inulin, and a little teeny bit of glucomannan. Glucomannan goes a long way. You know, it will expand 20 fold actually. So you can have a little cement thing if you don't add enough water and if you don't drink it immediately. And the benefit of high fiber foods or, you know, doing something like bionic fiber is satiety. Do you guys know the hormone related to satiety? It starts with a G, like my name. I love ghrelin, yeah. And so when we have proper ghrelin and the signaling that goes in our HPAT axis, so hypothalamus, pituitary, our adrenal, thyroid, the whole axis and our gut axis, we have a prime state for fat burning and maintenance of muscle so you don't lose your muscle. And if you're trying to, if you're lifting, you know, you get hypertrophy of your muscles. Um, this is an amazing way that we maintain muscles, mitochondria, and our microbiome, all three, the three M's. So check it out. Now, the second thing you want to consider to increase your vitality and lose body fat, ex, uh, excess body fat forever, forever permanently, is boost your oxytocin. Now, when I was losing my 50 pounds, um, I am, yes, so proud I lost 50 pounds at one point. It took me five freaking fucking long years. If I knew all that I knew now, I would have lost it in five months, like a lot of our clients. Um, oxytocin is key for fat loss and for vitality. When we don't have our hormones like um, all, all primed, um, oxytocin is one of the key ones um, because it's associated with healing, a lot of great healing. And... Healing um, works all over the body, and oxytocin is at the axis, the prime axis of it. And it, when our other hormones like cortisol, insulin, and adrenaline get better, so does you know. Usually, at the crux of it is oxytocin. Um, that is one of the prime neurotransmitters and signals um, that happen with the brain and the whole body, and they all kind of come together. So, all the exercises that we I've promoted for oxytocin, I'm going to go over a couple that we do with clients. Um, and uh, what, what it will help do is regulate your nervous system and get all the other main hormones in line. So uh, adrenaline, cortisol, and insulin. Insulin is very important to sensitize um, if, you're, if you're interested to lose body fat permanently. Um, I uh, did yoga combined with chronic cardio. Um, some people say, oh, chronic cardio is not that great for you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, actually, if you're super obese, it actually, studies show, is really awesome to sensitize all your hormones. And will pump up um, uh, anabolic hormones, progesterone for women, testosterone for men. And guess what? 
Chronic cardio is one of the best ways to lower excess estrogen other than all our liver support and phase one, phase two, you know, um, detox pathways. Chronic cardio, you gotta sweat. You have to like lose some of that, um, the uh, pathways we have to let go of things, you know, toxins in the body through sweat. And you sure you can go set, sit in sauna, but you can't do that forever. I wouldn't do it more than 10, 20 minutes, especially if, if you have adrenal problems, you know, the heat there is like draining on the adrenals if it's too long. And I like chronic cardio because you can do it for 40, 60, or even two hours. You can do 40, 60 minutes or two hours if you have really, you know, if you're not in chronic fatigue and your, body, your doctor and your medical team okays it. And there's tremendous um, benefits with it, which is shown over and over and over again in uh, many different studies. So oxytocin, where do you guys think all the best oxytocin comes from? We release it. Um, and if we don't have enough of it, there's, it's a sign. It's a sign of many things, sometimes PTSD, trauma, uh, childhood trauma, um, ASD, autism, and a lot of inflammatory disorders of the gut and the uh, chronic issues in the body will show that actually people will be depleted of oxytocin. But we can, we have ways to actually raise it up. So what are some ways? One is probiotics. So that's why it's old. We always go back to probiotics in nearly every step, step one, two, and three. And there are other ways. Um, all these, um, uh, uh, many of these species, okay, are actually associated with higher oxytocin levels in animal studies. Hopefully someday we'll get human studies. What are other ways, you guys? Massage, yeah. Um, sex, especially awesome consensual sex, right? Hugs, you know, anywhere where we're seeing people have an exchange of trust. So like handshakes, hugs, um, those are all awesome ways. One study showed in humans, 10 minutes of running release just as much oxytocin as 10 minutes of sex. Isn't that awesome? Uh, especially for you guys during um, these times, right? Not everyone is out there or have um, partners. I recommend <laughs> vibrators and weighted blankets. Yes, that is super awesome. So um, again, probiotics are helpful and then there are many other ways. So here at the Gut Institute, we have a couple tricks. We'll do some um, gargling. You can gargle with black cumin seed oil or salt saline water. Um, many things you can gargle with. Black cumin seed oil is really healing and helpful. Um, you can even take our probiotic and gargle with that. Um, you can also do um, uh, oil pulling, and that, that's a way of also engaging the vagal nerve, and you'll get oxytocin release. Um, other things are uh, giving each other, you know, your partner or your friends massages. You know, um, you can do that um, having all your senses engaged. So, smell, you know, have some essential oils. Um, in, in endorsing each other, like giving uh, really great. Um, encouragement like oh you know i i love you know i feel so cherished when you are um offering to do the dishes and these are ways we can um, add more love languages so that is including you know the verbal love, love language touch itself is a really great love language that not a lot of us are getting sometimes and then another um love language we want to engage other than hearing is um what was the other one a gift, you know, when we offer a, a massage to somebody, a friend, a partner, um, spouse, this is a gift. A lot of people have gifts, gift giving or gift receiving as one of their love language or, or a giving of love. So try to engage every love language, engage all of your senses. You can get really creative. You can tell me about it later and let me know what works. Okay, what's the third thing we can do to increase your vitality and permanently start weight loss? Okay, there's one macronutrient in our diet um, I already alluded to it, that we often will miss, you know, in caveman days or Paleolithic and before for hundreds of millions of years during our evolution from mammals and even to fish, we constantly had a macronutrient in our diet, right? It was called poopy yucky dirt, soil-based probiotics. And this is um, our probiotic. It's called Microbiome Mojo. It is you can pre-order it now. It's going to come out on December 23rd. It's a two-for-one probiotic. It's really potent. You only need one every other day. And it has soil-based probiotics. It's one of the first probiotics on the market that has soil-based probiotics and a high, super ultra high potency of bifidobacter um, a, a consortium that really supports all kinds of detox, oxytocin production, oxalate degra degradation, and sealing and healing of leaky gut. This is an, um, this is an awesome combo. And it's so easy to take because you only need one capsule every other day. 
and it has soil-based probiotics. This is something we don't have access to. You know, a lot of people of, like me, I don't go gardening all the day, all the time, or playing in the dirt. So this kind of mimics um, what we're missing, our outdoor exposures. Um, if we go hiking, we'll get probably a fair share just by breathing or getting it all over our clothes and our shoes. So one macronutrient um, is these dirt-based probiotics. And the bacteria we find, like um, uh, Lactobacillus plantarum and some really good yeast in fermented foods. How many of you guys eat some fermented foods almost every day? Awesome if you are. I try to. Whether it's sauerkraut, the juice of sauerkraut into like a salad, um, apple cider vinegar is another example, especially when you have the raw scoby in there. So many ways to add fermented foods. It's even more awesome if you can make it yourself like fermented carrots or fermented pickles, right? All raw without like sterilization. So um, many of us may not get, get this during this time of the year, um, but this is the best time of the year. This is how our ancestors would preserve um, vitamin C containing foods and foods with lots of um, nutrients during the winter months when foods like fresh foods might be really scarce. So there's something super ancestral about it, especially if you're a fan of Western A price. So, um, uh, my staff will also put in um, a really great um, guide. I don't know if some of you picked it up last week. These are, um, it's a couple pages and it's got all our friendly, you know, um, uh, it's called our drama-free holiday for gut health um, guide. So check it out. So now I'm gonna um, take some questions. Let me know what questions you have. And Sarah Taylor, thank you so much for joining us. I think I saw one of your questions. Thanks for joining, Sarah. Let me see, I'm gonna stroll. Thanks, Val, for joining. So, do you need to wait until you've tackled and cleared SIFO before taking the fiber mix? So that's really interesting. That is a very individual basis. Um, if you're generally pretty healthy, most people can take some fiber. Always, our protocols are to go low, go slow. So that means you start very low dose and you don't increase it and until you feel fine, like make sure no die off, no bloating, gas, no problems. Uh, so people will have problems. It's a litmus that um, your flora, you know, is in transition or flux and not everything may work initially. Um, inulin tends to be more problematic than the other fibers. I love um, psyllium. Um, it's one of the few um, fibers along with like oat fiber and some of the oligosaccharides like those found in inulin. Um, these short, shorter fibers are, and um, psyllium, they're associated actually with fat loss in both humans and in animals. It's super amazing and awesome. Um, part of the reason is that it binds a receptor system known as PPAR, which we even have drugs for because they're using diabetes and they um, are very helpful. Um, not all the drugs are awesome though. There's some side effects, even in cancers with some of them. So we want to naturally turn on these receptors and fiber is one of the best ways if you tolerate it. So again, go slow, go, go low and go slow. Consider that with your medical team. And if there's any adverse effects you need to back off or even consider halting and then gradually add it in if you can and add low doses. The thing is some people may not have enough probiotics. Like fiber is really awesome. It will help resurrect what's not there, but what may be needed is a bit more probiotics um, before all the fiber is added in. So you have to kind of play around and see what works the best, Sarah. Um, everyone's all different and very customized. Even with lab testing, we don't always know the best sequence to um, do probiotics and fiber. So probiotics and prebiotics are so important, but again, um, kind of depends on the state of the gut. Now, if someone, let's say, has super flared IBD, uh, uh, Crohn's or uh, colitis, ulcerative colitis, there are studies that actually show psyllium actually can damage their gut lining. This is when they're in an exacerbation and they have blood in their stools, you know, and really high inflammatory lab markers. Not a good idea. You know, the gut is already inflamed and it's almost like taking, um, you know, that scratchy paper <laughs> that you use for remodeling, you know, walls or wood to take off paint. Um, that scratchy surface, that's what psyllium will, has been shown on some microscopy studies. It can make it actually worse. So that's, a, a, you know, that's a, definitely a contraindication. But otherwise, for most people, um, they're going to be um, typically okay, unless you've done a lab that shows there's a lot of inflammation. Um, and if you don't know, it's better to test, don't guess. But I um, would have you consider with your medical team just a little trial and only do one fiber at a time with a lot of fluids and then see how it goes. And definitely try probiotics 
um, at least a couple weeks beforehand, one or two or three weeks um, beforehand before the fibers. So I hope that helps, Sarah. Let me know if you have further questions. Cynthia Ferris, thanks so much for joining me today. Legumes spike my blood sugar. How is that possible if the fibers are feeding my beautiful microbes? That is an awesome question. Great, great question. So Cynthia Ferris, we have a probiotic strain. We have the highest in, uh, strength in the industry. It's called Bifidobacterial longum. Longum is associated with longevity. And what I love about centenarian studies is that centenaries from all over the world, they're known as blue zones as well, they're shown to have really high concentrations of bifidobacteria longum, even as much as 0.5 to whole 1% of their whole microbiome out of the 100 trillion bacteria is bifidobacteria longum. And they also have all the other ABCs, A for acromantia, and they have a lot of butyrate producers, which are known as clostridi aulis. They have all the ABCs. That's the difference. And they also don't get a lot of medical care. They don't get a lot of antibiotics, and they certainly don't get C-sections that much. Um, bifidobacteria longum is very special. It takes actually carbs, especially sugars and, and smaller and di disaccharides and other, you know, uh, smaller uh, complex carbs and transforms these into beautiful compost or food, like other food, like polysaccharides for other, fi um, other flora to eat. So literally they're making prebiotics for other fiber, uh, other flora to eat. They make fiber. Um, they do it from simple carbs. So it's like they're building these other beautiful chains for other flora to eat. Now, if you don't have these um, bifidobacteria longum, it's known as a bifido shunt, that's what they have. If you don't have it, you're going to fart a lot. Also, what's um, up with legumes is if you don't soak them overnight. Legumes have a bacteria called lactobacilli on their surface. And when we soak them overnight, the, these lactobacilli get activated you got to make sure your um, beans don't aren't covered in glyphosate and as much as possible get organic beans. Glyphosate will kill the good bacteria and you won't get that processing happening. So what happens well, if you read my seven steps for SIBO, I talk a, a little bit about that. Or if you look at my older posts where I go into detail about legumes and lentils, which are amazing for our gut flora. And studies show if initially if you have gas, if you continue to eat it a small amount every other day or a few bites you know, every other day, gets, it gets adapts, it, it makes your flora adapt to breaking this down. It takes time, you know, overnight, you're not gonna suddenly build up the flora that eat the fiber from legumes. So there's a special oligosaccharide in legumes and lentils, it's called raffinose oligosaccharide. I actually did my undergrad studies on this. Um, ROS, raffinose or oligosaccharide. This is what causes gas, okay? And guess what? Lactobacilli and bifido help to break this down, not our pancreatic enzymes, okay? We have to have actually the good flora, a lot of bifido, a lot of uh, lactobacilli, and some soil probiotics also help too. And when you have all of them there, you'll tolerate legumes super great, right? And you'll get all the benefits from them without gas. Now to, to further, you know, help the gas. So you want to soak them overnight in water, throw the water away. And if you don't have lactobacilli on your beans, let's say you, you, you suspect maybe they're dead or whatever, um, add a little pinch of your favorite probiotic, pre preferably a, a streptococcus free probiotic and a saccharomyces free probiotic. These tend to be problematic for people who have gut problems. And if you can't break down legumes right now with a lot of, with a lot of gas production, you probably have a slight gut problem. You're missing some microbes, but it's very easy to resurrect them. People can often eat beans again with these, um, you know, guidelines in about a month, you know, maybe two months at the max. And if you still have issues, you probably want to test, don't guess. You may have a lot of overgrowth, which is preventing these good guys from staying there. And these, are, these belong in our portfolio in the gut. These are part of the wealth portfolio of the gut. And when clients come to us, when we're testing, there's a bankruptcy. It's really hard to resurrect what's not there, right? It's kind of like credit card debt. Like if someone's got tons of credit card debt, how do you suddenly become wealthy or like build assets? It's really hard. You got to change up the net, right? And maybe be more prudent, like where the, 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 the you know, money's going out and then build, 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 build. These are asset building um, bugs. We really need them in the gut and they found, create the foundation. Um, in this conference, I found out people who get COVID, they have a deficit of these bacteria, particularly the bifidobacteria longum. And again, if you've heard me talk before, I talk a lot about bifidobacteria longum. 
in ADHD, Asperger's, so many different chronic conditions, autoimmunity, progression of C. difficile, Clostridium difficile, um, diabetes, high blood pressure, all these studies, uh, there are many human studies that show there is a deficit of this species, Bifidobacteria longum, and all their buddies. So check these out. Yeah, um, if you want to have the metabolic benefit and not have the spikes, um, consider some of these. Um, also, there's a probiotic known as Pendulum. There's two, actually, and I consider both of those as well. They just came out this year with a lot of great, um, um, they have a lot of great studies behind it. I actually tried the earlier versions of it, and it works amazing and awesome. A little bit goes a long, long way with that. And an additional probiotic that we've, you probably heard me talk about, these, this is called equilibrium. These are environmental bacteria. A low dose goes a long way, just one cap a day. Um, it's 1 billion, that's it, really low dose, but super amazing also for degradation of gluten and dairy and other problems, uh, problematic um, pathogens. And what I love about it, it like, like these probiotics, it really helps with um, neurotransmitters like oxytocin and serotonin all these that we may lose during stress. So thank you so much for your question, Cynthia. I hope that helps you to understand a bit more. Jenny, Jenny, thank you so much for joining. And Lynn, what are the questions you guys have? Hi, Sharon, Adut, thank you so much for joining. And what's your question? I have a really bad habit of gum chewing. Could this be due to yeast overgrowth? Hmm. Well, we actually do recommend sometimes gum chewing for those with dry mouth, Sjogren's, and sometimes esophageal or heartburn reflux issues. Kind of helps um, the change up of the flora and moistens um, things. So I don't always think it's a bad thing. Um, sometimes in terms of psychosocial, uh, oral fixation to keep the mouth moving or chewing or eating sometimes has to do more with um, a, a habit, right? Or behavior um, related to um, an oral, you know, a, a, a need to like have something um, filling the mouth. Um, so if you're hungry, you again might want to consider the things I mentioned today, the three things. So hopefully that's helpful for you. For sure, you know, different SIBO, you know, bacterial overgrowth and certain um, candida yeast mold overgrowth does contribute to cravings. So you can watch our show last week if you want. Um, cravings come from a lot of things. If it's actually, um, that's why, you know, you want like to chew, um, that could be. And also you may want to look at periodontal disease with your dentist. Everything we recommend helps the oral microbiome actually. And then there's some specific things that you might want to consider. Um, ask me some more questions if that's the case for you for periodontal disease. We have a lot of su suggestions. Um, what we have found, people open some of the, uh, the capsules or they use the powder and put in the mouth um, a little pinch um, after brushing the teeth. That really can help change the oral microbiome. That might help if you uh, might want to consider if you're finding that there's some dysbiosis in the gums, in the periodontal tissues, or um, tongue or mouth. Hope that helps. Nadeza, thank you so much for joining. That's a very exotic name. I don't know where you're from, but that sounds great. Hey, Angel, Armor, Nikki, thanks so much for joining us from SoCal. Hi, Sharon. So your additional question is how to get rid of yeast overgrowth. Awesome. We have something called the Master gut class, MGC, master gut class, and that will help to relieve that in four months or less. Um, if, you're, um, if you consider that the gut may have dysbiosis for many years or many decades, like 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you might want to consider that class and also repeating it for four phases. But it takes generally a minimum of two or three phases. And the reason is because microbes interact with one another. There's a lot of interactions between our um, there's a polymicrobial mix, in other words. There's viruses, which are really tiny. There's bacteria, which is the next size up. Then there's fungal, okay? It's right in the middle. And then bigger than fungi are parasites, um, eukaryotic and single cell parasites. So it actually ends up being a whole zoo of different size um, microbes. It's not just yeast that are overgrowing. If there's the presence of yeast, there's also all of them there as well. If there's SIBO, there's also 
all of them present as well. And in our protocols, we'll teach you how to actually regulate and manage all of them, as well as get your nervous system better regulated, you know, get your HPA T adrenal access as perfect as possible, and get your anabolic hormones primed up so that you can heal permanently. So thanks for much, so much for joining. I'm just gonna add really briefly, we added some amazing products to our store. And these are super amazing to spike up rapid recovery and increase vitality as well as um, lose uh, excess body fat permanently. So we'll talk more about these, but look out for our newsletter if you want more information soon. Uh, join our newsletter just by going to our website, thegutinstitute.com, thegutinstitute.com. Uh, there are a lot of offerings for, uh, for how you can join um, our newsletter, and we'll be posting more information and some discounts about this soon. This combo is just bomb, bomb. BCP-157 and an early, amazing, uh, potent, potent, bioavailable uh, thymazine beta-4 frag plus. So amazing and badass. Can't wait to tell you guys more about this soon. Thank you for joining today. Love you guys all and love your microbiome.